All right, guys, we're still uh, on the uh, ratio rocker uh, dilemma. Uh, <laughs> this is this is fun. I'm having way too much fun not to share this. Okay, so what we're trying to do is get our push rods cut. Here's my engine. Uh, it is during the first assembly. Uh, actually, it's like three or four times. Those cylinders are sealed down, but the cylinder heads are torqued down. I left the push rods off, so that allows me to uh, play with the rocker arms on top and uh, try to get these push rods cut to size. So what I've done, <laughs> this is great. Let's see. Okay, what you do <laughs> is you take an old push rod that you're never going to use again and you cut a section out of it, you tap it and put a machine screw in there or whatever size you want to tap it out to and you make yourself an adjustable length push rod you can buy these I chose to make mine works just fine okay so you take your push rod and you just slide that baby in here and actually you know you get it exactly installed just like you would inside the cup and you have to have that screw adjusted where you decided you got the best oil flow here and I decided that that was approximately three turns out that's where the oil hole in this screw lines up with the rocker arm so it can lubricate the shaft if you don't have that in the right position you're gonna gall the shaft and this thing's not gonna live too long okay so at any rate you get your push rod in you take your feeler gauge and you adjust your valve do it all with the adjustable push rod here and then I got found these uh, years ago I found these uh, machinists uh, oh, blocks V blocks uh, at a garage sale I think a sticker still on the side of them for for like 15 bucks or something anyhow I like to pick up that stuff whenever I get a chance so what I did started off I've only got two done so far okay I laid it down here on the v-blocks I butted it up against the back of my vise something solid then I took my new uncut push rod I lay it on top you can see that and take your tip I'm leaving them in the bag so I don't lose them. <laughs> they don't give you extra tips and push rods. They call that the uh, the May West end. And what I'm doing is I I know. Oop, sorry. I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Okay, I get that set so it matches the length I want I take my magic marker and I I blacken the rod I want to cut blacken it up then I take the scribe out of uh, this is out of a square anything sharp and hard will work and then I scratch through the blackened uh, magic marker so I know where I want to make my cut I tried cutting it with a hacksaw. That ain't happening, brother. <laughs> You're going to be here for a long time and spend a lot of money on blades before you get this chrome molly to cut. So here I've got a piece in the vise. And uh, let's see if I can loosen this vise up without dropping everything. Okay, I've taken my Dremel tool. There's my little cut. There's the magic marker. There's the scribe. And then I've, um, I'm just turning this and I'm going around. And it's, uh, I can do two uh, push rods with, uh, with one blade of my Dremel. 
<laughs> okay, now the next thing is you got to get the tip in the push rod. What you do again is uh, I'm going to get this out of the picture. Get this stuff out of here too. Okay, here's an old lifter. And I cut it down so that I can see what I'm doing. Then I take my my uh, push rod and I set that in the base. I take my tip and it does does go in just a little bit. Boy, it's hard to do this. Let me set this in the stand here and see if that works out a little bit better. This is just way too much fun not to share. Okay. Sounds like the wind's blowing out there a little bit. Alright. I think we can see each other now. Alright. So, <clears throat> let's see. I'm not going to put this in because this one isn't cut yet. It's not ready to go. But they do fit in there. And they'll start. So you get it started straight. I put a little luber plate. Smear some of that on there. And, uh, Oops, set it in my deep one, take the top one, and actually it works better if I set this on the floor because the workbench takes a little shock and you just set, turn this up upside down and uh, have it sitting on the floor and take your BFG and uh, smack that side of the gun in and you, you'll tell when it's home. It does a nice job. Here's, uh, here's my ends on the on the end of it and then I'm putting them back in and testing it. This is really time consuming but <clears throat> it's really expensive so I want to get it right the first time and I want it to last. Um, what else did I want to share with you? Um, oh, let's see. Don't forget to put your lash caps on the valve before you do your measurements and trial piece and uh, I don't know if, if it's even worth saying this. I'll just I'm just freehanding this, but uh, I'll fire this up. Oh, okay. I, I just remembered. Okay. I found that 22 caliber gun cleaning kit, pistol kit, and the little gun, the patches, you want to get that dust from your grinding disc out of the push rod. So I'm using compressed air just like cleaning a rifle barrel except you've got the other end in it and then so that I can see down the tube I don't know if you guys have seen this I got just your basic uh, mag light and uh, this is just a piece of fiber optic gives you a little tip that lights up this is great if you guys are into guns and stuff for looking in tight places and when you put that light down inside the tube it's just like a rifle barrel uh, it's not quite that polished, but, you know, at least you can see if there's grit and grime in there. Because you don't want that going through your engine. It's just going to uh, grind it away to nothing. And we don't want that to happen. So we want to have fun for a long time. Here's a couple of the ends that I cut off. First one I made a little bit too long. Second one I made a little bit too short. So uh, hopefully this one is just right. What I'm doing after I cut it... I'll just give you kind of a demonstration. Nothing like watching the real deal. Okay, just eyeballing it. Now, I'm just holding it here. It wants to, if you get it caught, it'll tear up the disc. But I'm, I'm holding it in such a manner that the sparks are going away from me. If you put it in the wrong spot, you just line up. I have safety glasses on. Make sure you wear safety glasses. And just take your time, and you'll feel it when it goes through into the tube. Don't want to put a lot of pressure. Take your time. Try to get it as straight as you can. And after you go, you know, a little way, readjust it. And uh, I'm not good enough to just whip it around, but I got pretty darn close. So, anyhow, having fun, and uh, that's the routine. Then what I'm doing, once I get it cut through, 
I take it over to the grinder and I try to square it up, get all the burrs off the end. It will, you can file that edge with a, a normal file. That'll take it off, a, a good sharp file. And I'm taking a, uh, oh, this goes in a drill press. It's, uh, it's just to, to taper the, the hole. And I just hold it with my bare hands. I'm not doing anything fancy. I just want to take that edge off there so I'm not fighting it when I drive my tip in there. And, you know, I suppose you could pound on a piece of wood or put it in the vise, but I don't want to mess up those nice round tips because that's what rides inside your, your rocker eyeball. And SCAP recommends that you use 5 6 radius balls and that's what I'm doing so I'm going by the book taking my time hopefully doing it right and uh, I'll have a big smile on my face when I fire this baby up so anyhow just wanted to fill you in on that uh, there's probably other stuff I'll just make another video later so I hope you guys are having a good day get out there in the garage and uh, work on your project for as long as you can it uh, adds up if you do a little at a time. Thanks for watching.